yes so it looks like we're gonna be live and like now we're live we are live hey everybody hey, hey. so we don't wait on viewers here because we keep it rolling because they're gonna pop in and on the people of power show welcome this is kitty london hosting creator and on people of power show we educate we entertain and we engage and look at you looking all nervous over there dr petrova <laughs> I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to look. You know, so <laughs> I guess at the camera? Yes, you can look at the camera. We, mm -hmm. we actually start getting a viewer. So I just want to kind of let everybody know a little history. Um, Dr. Petrova actually has uh, treated both of my sons. One is still in treatment. So I'm not going to tell anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do for my kids. And my oldest son, I don't know, you probably, because you've seen like how many mouths at this point? Uh, about 15,000. 15,000 mouths. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my oldest son was in treatment, and my little son came up, and you kind of just did like a real quick oral view, and you're like, he's going to need braces. And I was like, I'm rebuking that. I, I'm not going to claim that. I'm like, can we transfer the braces on him to him? And you're like, I oh, know we can't do that. But uh, long story short, my son didn't need braces. So he's still going here in two more treatments. Um, we have, hey, uh, Rochelle, hey, Brianna. So if you have any questions, feel free. He's here for an hour to pick his brain we're gonna we're gonna go over some uh mouth myths i call it for people who are kind of scared of getting braces or you know have some questions or concerns so what i do is i could do a background check so we want to kind of know for people who don't know you kind of go with how you started or how did you come up with wanting to do uh orthodontics yeah well uh i was kind of always interested in science and uh mm -hmm. decided i wanted to do something in the health sciences and uh went to a uh, seven-year dental program at NYU mm -hmm. uh, with the idea of becoming an oral surgeon. And uh, by the time I got about halfway through, uh, through dental school, uh, actually the beginning of dental school, I, uh, I realized I did not want to be an oral surgeon at all. I thought that was kind of, kind of boring and thought mm -hmm. orthodontics would be uh, much more interesting mm -hmm. and, uh, and switched over towards orthodontics and then uh, Wow. and did a residency after that and mm -hmm. a fellowship in orthognathic surgery and mm -hmm. jaw surgery and uh, been an orthodontist ever since. Wow, so that's what you knew, like, just from the get-up, that you wanted to be in, in I knew I wanted, yeah, I, I, I kind of decided in, uh, in, in, I guess about uh, junior, senior mm -hmm. of, of high school that I wanted to go into dentistry. I had mm -hmm. an uncle who was uh, a, period, a periodontist, a dentist, and mm -hmm. uh, and it intrigued me, and I, I really liked the idea of doing uh, mm -hmm. craniofacial uh, stuff, uh, cleft oh. lip, cleft, cleft lip, cleft palate, mm -hmm. kind of intrigued me a lot, and uh, I figured I'd go in that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the uh, summer of my first year in dental school, I, uh, I, I saw that uh, I was looking for an opportunity to do some research, and uh, I enjoyed a course in uh, growth and development of the, of the human face and really uh, really got me going and I, I decided I was going to uh, to pursue that uh, for the summer to do some research and mm -hmm. of course was uh, taught by uh, one of my early mentors uh, Jerry Burrell head of, uh, of orthodontics at NYU wow. and uh, he, he hooked me up with some people over at the medical center and mm -hmm. I started to do, to do some research and that's when I kind of saw all the cool stuff that was going on at, mm -hmm. at the medical center uh, with more advanced surgeries that mm -hmm. uh, plastic surgeons were doing. Mm -hmm. And I realized I didn't want to be an oral surgeon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really was really loved what the, what the orthodontist was doing to set up mm -hmm. the, the patients for, for major jaw surgery and for craniofacial surgeries. Wow. And that's when I decided that I wanted to go into orthodontics. Mm -hmm. wow. So I was... I was, uh, this was after college, mm -hmm. um, so I was, you know, like I said, I started to think about this when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, went into the seven-year dental program, mm -hmm. and then after a little bit of time in college, mm -hmm. uh, and I, excuse me, then after my first year of dental school, then I decided to, to become an orthodontist. I was probably about 24, 25 years old at the wow, time. Wow, you were young. Yeah, relatively young. You were young. Did you ever wear braces? No, but yeah. I, but as my first, <laughs> as my first Invisalign patient. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, as my very first Invisalign patient when I first mm -hmm. came out twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you were like decided, the guinea pig. I was the guinea pig. I decided, you know, I never had braces. I had mm -hmm. a I had a gap between my teeth. Oh okay. Um, which I have in all my wedding pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
they were making fun of me when I wanted to do some orthodontics at uh, at, at the at the, re at the residency at NYU, mm -hmm. and uh, the instructors said, "No, are you crazy?" But every single woman in the program had braces going at that time. Wow! And, uh, and they didn't want to do it on me, so I waited until Invisalign came out, mm -hmm. and, and that was literally my first Invisalign and patient. And this was twenty years. Twenty years ago, Invisalign wow. is twenty years old. Yeah. It's, that went by fast. It seems yeah. like it was like yesterday. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Now people are kind of just getting, you know, it looks like people are talking about it more now. Exactly, before. exactly. It's become a very big mm -hmm. company. They do a lot of marketing, so you see a lot of ads on TV, so it's becoming a little bit more of a household word. But mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it was in its infancy, and I, I, mm -hmm. I was the first. See, my gap is gone. Your gap is gone. <laughs> and again, um, if you're tuning in, please just make sure you, Danielle's already asking a question. We're going to get to a lot of questions because I know a lot of people have questions about their teeth. Um, but we're going to talk about that. So if you have any questions for Dr. Petrova, please chime in and type so we can get those questions answered. Now, we'll talk about Invisalign since that was a, one of the first questions. How does Invisalign actually work? Well, Invisalign's a lab and um, they, uh, they use a series of clear plastic trays mm -hmm. called aligners. Okay. And this is uh, an aligner. Mm -hmm. And that goes over, I'm not going to put it in my mouth, that's not mine. Nope. Uh, but but <laughs> this, this, this would go in your mouth. It's mass customization. So what happens is, uh, is uh, you get scanned with a digital scanner, which is mm -hmm. just off screen over here. Okay. So we scan you with a digital scanner, shoot the data down to Invisalign, mm -hmm. uh, write up a prescription, tech plays with it a bit, I re-engineer the smile, get everything the way I like it, and mm -hmm. it goes into production. And what we get is we get a series of, of trays, a series of clear plastic trays, mm -hmm. and each tray gently moves your teeth a tiny little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really pretty cool technology because you know, they make millions of these every year and mm -hmm. every single one is different than every single other one. Mm -hmm. So a series of trays for me mm -hmm. won't fit in anyone else's mouth. Okay. And each tray is so you can't different. pass on your Invisalign no, you to anybody no, else. No, no, you can't. <laughs> can't yeah. do it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 really kind of nice. So you wear each tray typically for about a week, and uh, it gently moves the teeth into the correct positions. Mm -hmm. um, so they last for about a week. About a week, yes. Oh, wow. You're wearing each one for about a week, and people oh. typically wear, you know, depending on the severity of the situation, mm -hmm. uh, you're probably probably wearing. I'd say average patient wears about sixty of them. So maybe mm -hmm. about 60 weeks of treatment or so. So that's about a, a, little, a little over a year. year. A little over a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said, so when they do the molding, they actually mm -hmm. do a scan. It's a scan. It's no molding. We, none of that I remember back, yes, yeah, that's yeah, when my first, yeah. my oldest No one's going to gag. Right. None of that goopy stuff. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's totally changed. Totally digital. Yeah. Okay. Very is that cool. also with the metal braces too that they Yeah. Use? So what okay. we're doing now is we're also starting to do retainers. Mm -hmm. um, with the metal braces, with digital scans. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our appliances, our old lab appliances, are also done off of a digital scan. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to eliminate the goop from the practice. Okay. And uh, a lot of our, our retainer patients are opting to do retainers that, are, that only use the scan, so we don't have to take impressions wow. anymore. Wow, that's really neat. That's an advancement. Okay, so we're going to talk about, okay, because I, I, I have some more questions. Now, for people who are thinking about Invisalign, when you think about Invisalign versus regular braces, can you kind of break down, of, I guess, who's a candidate for either or? Because I know some people are not a candidate for Invisalign. And That's correct. Can you tell us why? I, I would say um, probably fewer than 10% of, mm -hmm. of orthodontic patients are not candidates for Invisalign because mm. uh, they have certain movements that are very, very difficult to do with Invisalign. But these are these are typically surgical situations, okay. uh, major impacted teeth, uh, situations that, that are not very common. Mm. The overwhelming majority of patients can be successfully treated with Invis Invisalign, including mm. kids. Mm. So we have, we have some fairly young kids who still have baby teeth in their mouths that, that could benefit from, from early orthodontic treatment and uh, interceptive orthodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and those kids are, are wearing Invisalign very successfully. So, mm -hmm. so I'd say our youngest Invisalign patient is probably about seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. Our oldest Invisalign patient mm -hmm. is 93. 93. 93. Okay, because I did have someone, we, we, I came up with, a, and if you have any questions or concerns, please, if I don't cover them, please make sure that you ask. But I did a kind of like a, just like a general statement of what would stop you from what is stopping you from getting braces or what things that may concern you sure. and i had a young lady say, well she's in her 50s but she said that age mm -hmm. would stop her so people think that because they reach a certain age that 
braces why i mean my teeth have been crooked for 80 years who's who's going to care what do you tell those type of patients that think because you said 93 now that's yeah, yeah. that's up there that's up there, <laughs> that's, that's up up there. there. so i mean but, she, but she's got an 90 year old husband so you know oh well, yeah. he wants to make sure those teeth stay okay mm, okay <laughs> but what what i mean what would your and i, I don't want to say selling point but i mean you as an orthodontist if someone thinks that well i'm you know i'm i'm 80 why would i need braces are there any medical reasons for people yeah, at that age? Yeah, okay. um, Having straight teeth and, and, and a proper bite uh, makes your mouth healthier. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been a lot of systemic diseases that have been associated with, with crooked teeth and wow. with periodontal disease, mm -hmm. including things like diabetes. So mm -hmm. having, having straighter teeth makes your body health, healthier. Having cleaner gums makes your body healthier. Mm -hmm. And if someone has, uh, as, as we get older, most people's teeth tend to get more crowded, tend to bunch up. Mm -hmm. um, our bodies are always changing, unfortunately. We're right. not always going to look so young and, and beautiful. <laughs> but uh, but our, our bodies change over time, mm -hmm. and and uh, and they usually don't change for the better. Mm -hmm. So we have naturally aging dentition, mm -hmm. where the teeth used to be straight or almost straight, mm -hmm. and you look in the mirror and you go, oh my God, my teeth are moving. And we have the ability to straighten them out and mm -hmm. turn back the, 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 the clock of uh, the, the hands of time a little bit and, uh, and straighten the teeth. Mm -hmm. And uh, that enables you to brush easier and floss easier and have a healthier mouth as well as look better. Look right. better. Rather. Look better. Yeah. And that's the thing I think most people think when they think about getting braces, it's a vanity issue. Like, yeah, oh, sure. I want and, and, and it is and because you make people's teeth look amazing. Thank you. I Thank mean, you, you should be Thank proud. You. Yeah, You're, it's kind of fun. What they call like make America great again. You really are um, because of the smiles and a lot of the children. I notice they have more self esteem. Absolutely. So there's there's Better a, self -esteem. there's, a, there's a, one of the reasons why we'll do orthodontic treatment on mm -hmm. young children mm -hmm. is is uh, is because of self esteem. So if mm -hmm. kids get picked in school, you know there's there's a lot, unfortunately there's a lot of bullying going on and kids mm -hmm. kids are sometimes mean to each other. And, uh, and the ability to, to make someone who's not comfortable with how they look, mm -hmm. make them feel better, give them really good self-confidence, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. That happens at all ages. That's I mean, true. everyone wants to look better. And you were asking uh, about, about the adult patient, mm -hmm. you know, why does a 50-year-old want to get braces? Why does a 50-year-old want to have his or her hair done nice? Mm -hmm. You see, my, my hair's beautiful. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, why does, why does someone want to get their hair done? Why, why would they want to wear nice makeup? I have wear nice clothes. They want to look good. They want to feel good about themselves. They want themselves. to feel good about themselves. And, and, uh, and straightening your teeth is one of the ways that, that you mm -hmm. can make, make yourself feel good about yourselves. We have mm -hmm. lots of adult patients who, who weren't afforded the opportunity to do it when they were kids. Mm -hmm. Their parents couldn't afford to do it or it wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And uh, our practice is uh, probably a good 35-40% adults. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're so happy. You mm -hmm. know. We have a question from Erica Huey. She says, why don't a lot of insurance, com insurance companies cover braces? I, I, I wish I could, I could answer that question. Um, it's, it's the insurance companies, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're interested in making money. They're not interest, interested in, in uh, giving benefits. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there are a fair number of insurance companies that will cover some orthodontic mm -hmm. treatment uh, for children, mm -hmm. uh, others that will cover adults. So, so if you're the employee, uh, sometimes it will cover your dependent children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will cover the adults. Sometimes it will cover adults and dependent children. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it never covers at 100%. It's mm -hmm. always going to be a, um, a fraction of, of, of what the orthodontic fees are, but every little bit helps. So if your employer covers uh, covers you, you might as well use the benefits. Right. And, uh, you know, in, in insurance, uh, I would say insurance uh, varies between $1,000 and $2,000 mm -hmm. towards orthodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. Plus, there are some discount plans that, that also bring the cost down. Okay. And I know a couple of the people that are listening to, they're, they're self-employed because they're entrepreneurs as well. And I know one of the uh, young ladies, she said she, she wanted to get braces in her two kids need braces so she's thinking that's going to be like eighteen thousand dollars worth of, of dentistry do you have i mean if you can talk about it if you can't we'll sure. you know we'll have them call the office but as far as options for people who don't have insurance so yes can... absolutely so so we know that orthodontics is an investment uh, you know mm -hmm. we're, we're not talking about going out taking the family out for dinner 
Um, <laughs> That's an expensive dinner, boy. <laughs> it's it, it's not taking the family out right, for dinner, so right. so it's definitely an investment. I think mm -hmm. it's a great investment. We're it talking is. about the self esteem and and mm -hmm. the looks and mm -hmm. and you know, we live in a society that judges us to a degree on looks mm -hmm. and and looking good and feeling good about yourself um, pays dividends. It puts money in your pocket. You're gonna get a better job, you're gonna get more raises. That's mm -hmm. unfortunately just how the world works. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you end up with a car. with a with a prettier <laughs> maybe a maybe you end up with a with a with a, a prettier spouse or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but but that that's how the world works. So so it is an investment in your future. But but getting into the nuts and bolts of, of paying for this, um, we're very, very flexible. I think mm -hmm. most orthodontists try to make things as affordable as possible. Um, we recognize that people don't have a fortune sitting in their bank account. People, people, a lot of people are are, are living pay, paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. You have some savings, but you don't have enough savings to, to pay for full orthodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we offer lots of lots of options. Uh, most of our patients, uh, we have some patients who pay in full, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, we have patients who get a discount through the insurance company and then either make monthly payments mm -hmm. or pay in full. I was, a, people, I was a monthly payment payer. Yeah, most of our patients, most of our patients <laughs> do monthly payments and, mm -hmm. and, and we work with you with, with a down payment, with mm -hmm. an initial payment, whatever you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. and uh, monthly payments and we can even extend payments past treatment time. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, orthodontic fees and orthodontic treatment time aren't necessarily the same. So, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're taking care of your orthodontic needs and let's say your treatment lasts 16 and a half months. You may have payments out for 20 months, just like you're, someone asked about, you know, like buying a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you drive the car off the lot and you're making payments on the car. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing with orthodontics. We try to make it as affordable as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly when there are multiple members of the family, um, if people could afford to do it all together, that's kind of great, because mm -hmm. it just makes it so much easier to bring in all the kids at the same time, mm -hmm. but uh, we have people who could afford to take care of one kid at a time, and, mm -hmm. and that's that's okay too. And uh, we we help we help try to uh, prioritize uh, which child should go first, mm -hmm. and uh, we work with the families. And once we have a relationship with the families, we really try to make it very easy for mm -hmm. them to bring in additional children into the into the practice, mm -hmm. um, you know, in a financial way. And I have two testimonies about the office because. Um, you know, when, especially like you said, when you do the monthly payments, sometimes things happen, you know, car trouble. Sure. And your office was always nice to me. Like I would call up and I'm not telling people oh, don't pay, but you know, there, there's some months, sometimes things happen. Sure. And you always treated us thank with you. respect. Thank you. Thank and I just wanted to thank say you. that thank I'm paid in full now. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. Because I don't handle. Right, yeah, no. I don't handle any right. of the financial aspect. Right. That's all done by, by the front desk. And, mm -hmm. and I like that because I like taking care of the patients. It's, Correct. Uh, you know, I, I understand mm -hmm. this like everything else is mm -hmm. a business, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but it happens. And, but it, and but you life treat, happens, and, and, and they were always. I don't nice. even. I don't even want to know what's going on financially. I, I take care. <laughs> I take care of the patients. You're not gonna get your breakfast <laughs> home today, buddy. You're behind. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't even know. I don't even know that. Right. No, I'm never. I'm never involved in that. Right. So, so and I just wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say it's that. And a, another thing too, because when I. You, I guess when you have multiple children, you, you, you're used to it. But my first son, I wanted to make sure. I was like, well, the clear brace. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. The clear braces. I'm like, well, he may want to smile. And he may not want to look like he has braces. And you told me, you were like, listen, the clear is way more. They don't need clear. Give him metal. He'll be fine. And I, and I had so much more respect for you. Because I'm like, he's not trying to upsell me. He's not making, it's, you know, he knows my finances. And you're like, they're they're fine and they were fine. And you also want thank you. And you also <laughs> want to know you also want to do what's what's good for the kid. Right. We we have a, a lot of parents who come in there and the parents are thinking about themselves mm -hmm. in a good way. I mean, the parents right. are there for the kids, but they're they're there for themselves. Excuse me, they're thinking of themselves. So they're saying, I don't want to wear metal braces. I want to wear clear braces. Mm -hmm. And the kid is sitting there and they're in seventh grade and all their friends have metal braces and that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, mom, it's for them, not for you. So you what know? is, so what is the, like, mm -hmm. guess, or the myth of what, sure. what's the difference? Is there any 
I mean, of otherwise sure. the cost, but. Well, well, we have, we, we use self-tightening braces, or so self-ligating braces, which okay. are the most advanced types of braces. Mm -hmm. They tend to move the teeth quicker, they're cleaner, they're more comfortable, shorter appointments. So, so we use really good braces. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are basically two types of braces, is metal braces and the clear braces. And they are exactly the same in our office. They do the exact same thing. The only difference between them is the material. What's it made out of? Okay. And the manufacturers charge more for the clear ones, so there's a little bit of an upcharge for the clear ones. It comes mm -hmm. out to maybe fifty cents a day. I mean, it's not a it's not a huge amount of money mm -hmm. in the realm of things. But uh, if you want to do clear, you you do clear. Mm -hmm. uh, now Invisalign, of course, is clear. And uh, we don't charge uh, more for Invisalign than we charge for metal braces. So Invisalign is really very well priced. Wow. And uh, some of the nice things about Invisalign is that you clear don't have... Clear stains. <laughs> actually, stain? actually um, Erica, uh, the clear braces that we use do not stain at all. Uh, I understand you might have had some experience with, uh, with, with some braces that stained in the past. Mm -hmm. The clear braces do not stain. There are little rubber ties that go around them to hold the wire in, and that could stain. And uh, we don't use those. Uh, we use self-tightening braces, so there are no, uh, so the, so there is no rubber tie around uh, mm -hmm. around the braces, and so therefore we don't get any staining. Uh, the, the 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 bracket is the same color the day we put it on as the day we take it off. Mm -hmm. um, but Invisalign is kind of cool because it's not braces. Mm -hmm. So you take it out to eat, you take it out to brush. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest hassle people have with braces is is watching the food that they eat, and. Uh, Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking Danielle is, is Danielle may you may see her on here. She's actually one of the key members um here at Dr. Butcher's office. So she will be answering some of the questions as well. You had a question about location and Danielle is right on it. Thank you, <laughs> Kudos to Danielle, she's right on it. So let me just go down some of the questions that or concerns. Sure. Okay, first concern of why people would not want to get braces. They cannot eat their favorite foods. What's the, what's the deal with that? Um, the deal with that is you could eat, <laughs> you could eat any food, not every, any junk, not every junk food, but you could eat every food mm -hmm. with the exception of nuts and uh, that's pretty much it. So any food you could eat with the exception of nuts, so nuts. with braces on. Now certain foods you have to eat differently. So mm -hmm. if you want to play Bugs Bunny with a carrot, it's not going to work. You're going to break things. Okay. So you got to take a knife. Or candy and apples, like up. my son did with yeah. the. Well, with candy the apples isn't food. It's junk. Food. What is junk? Okay. <laughs> but, but an apple is food, and okay. if you bite into an apple, you're going to probably break a bracket off. So mm -hmm. you just cut it up into bite-sized pieces. So there are pieces. ways of doing it. There are ways of dealing it. with it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it's so fun mm -hmm. because when you when you have the children, you tell them the list of things. Eventually, everyone breaks the rules. You you, sure. you, you get that right with the uh -huh. popcorn and. Okay. Yeah, you so, never so, you never drove. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure when you drive down down the street, you never never go one mile over the speed limit. Right. Right. right yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So just to let people know, there are are ways um to get around the whole uh, food thing. The other thing is comfort. Well, let me let me okay. uh, let me discuss uh, the the break uh, the food okay. again. Okay. Um, that's where Invisalign comes in. Also, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, you could pretty much eat anything with braces. But you have to eat things differently. So mm -hmm. if you uh, you into your wings, you got to take kind of take the meat off the bone to have your wings. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I know I know you know people like their oxtail soup, and people are into you know biting into big sandwiches mm -hmm. and pizza crust or bagels, mm -hmm. and those things are kind of rough on, on on the braces. Now you can wow. tear them into bite sized pieces and eat them. So mm -hmm. like I said, you can eat those foods, but it's a hassle. And one of the nice things about Invisalign is you pop it out, you eat whatever you want. There's mm -hmm. no restrictions at all with Invisalign. Mm -hmm. um, the other big hassle people have is keeping things clean. Mm, um, the hygiene. And hygiene, yeah. It's a pain in the neck with the braces. And, and you do it. Listen, there's a benefit to it. So, mm -hmm. so you work on it. But Invisalign is amazing. You pop it out, and you brush your teeth and floss your teeth like normal. So, mm. you know, some of those teenage kids, you know, who have a tough time keeping them clean, mm -hmm. some of them would be better off in Invisalign than braces. Okay, and then you have to just like when you eat, do they pop them in or pop yes, them off? Yes, yes, you pop oh. them, put them on, take them off. Oh, super wow. easy. Hmm. Super easy. You need anything? I said, "Wow, I didn't know that." Uh, that was the braces. Okay, so we. Uh, I was talking about comfort. I know my first son; he had to get spacers. Do you still do spacers? Uh, we very rarely put spacers uh -huh. in people's mouths before we put braces on. Okay. Um, we don't do them, the only time we do them is when we're doing a special lab, a lab uh, appliance. So it's okay. something that really, okay. 
it's something in the past. Yes. We, we don't use them in our practice. I know sometimes mm -hmm. I see patients who come in to our office from other office office and, mm -hmm. and we see them occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we don't put spacers in to put bands on teeth okay. unless we're doing a specific appliance. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have ways of, usually we would have had to do that twice and now we have ways using the okay. scanning technology to only do it once. Right. So it makes it much more comfortable, much easier. Okay, because that, that, that was a question that yeah, we almost, wouldn't get braces. We almost never use those spaces. It's those and, are uncomfortable. They and are. And my son, I remember mm -hmm. back in the day you know, when people got their teeth tightened, they would get mm -hmm. headaches. My son has never complained. He's, you know, he's not the biggest, uh, you know, <laughs> strong guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. he hasn't complained. So I think for people... Um, who are worried about comfort is I mean is it kind of just it varies depending on the patient it varies I mean some people some people have a hard time with with some things and some people have an easier time with the same thing mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's a lot of personal variation mm -hmm. with anything that's uncomfortable okay. so having said that um, we use titanium wires, which are very, very, very soft. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the self-tightening braces, which are very, very gentle. Mm -hmm. And Invisalign is very, very gentle. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, um, using some accelerated uh, treatments, we're also able to, uh, there's an appliance that will help also reduce discomfort. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally speaking, orthodontics these days is, is, is not too uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Adults have a tougher time than kids because adults are older and mm -hmm. change is harder and their bones denser. But um, but it's we really don't have a lot of complaints about discomfort. Do you okay after the braces are done? Do you recommend a permanent retainer? That's a great question. Um, a lot of people think permanent retainers are the cure to any problems in their lives. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. permanent or fixed retainers break. Uh, often they break without the patient knowing. So by the time you know that the permanent retainer is broken teeth have moved. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you see uh, permanent retainers that aren't broken and still the teeth move. So I, I always recommend, even if we're using a permanent retainer, I always recommend having a removable retainer on top of it mm -hmm. to sleep with at night just to make sure everything is safe. Mm -hmm. The big problem with the permanent retainers is flossing underneath them. So you have mm -hmm. to floss underneath the fixed retainer or the permanent retainer Otherwise, you can get cavities and gum disease. So a lot of hygienists don't like them. A lot of dentists don't like them. Mm -hmm. A lot of moms think they're the greatest thing on earth because they they feel like they don't have to tell their kid to wear their retainer, mm -hmm. but they have to tell their kid to floss and brush underneath. Mm -hmm. And then kids go off. They you know they move out of the house. They go off to college. Before you know it, they have dental problems. Wow. So I'm not a huge fan of them, but we use them where it's appropriate. And if mm -hmm. someone wants them, I certainly would use them. And okay, Jessica um, has a question. My 22 year old daughter never lost her baby teeth. She was referred to an, um, an orthodontist. What is the process of removing the baby teeth and adding braces? Why does she need braces and the, doesn't the adult teeth need to fall? Yes. Hi, Miss Jessica. Um, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, I'll try to answer it in a general way because I, of course, haven't seen your daughter. Um, Sometimes baby teeth don't fall out because of very delayed eruption. Although by the time someone's 22 years old, chances are that's not going on. I've only really encountered that once in my life. Mm -hmm. Chances are if, they, if, you're, if your daughter still has baby teeth in when she's 22, it's probably because she's missing permanent teeth underneath it. Mm -hmm. And underneath the baby teeth. And then depending on what the bite's like, what the straightness of the teeth are like, what the baby teeth are like, um, sometimes it's advisable just to keep the baby tooth there and if there are orthodontic needs, the bite is bad, the teeth are crooked, there are gaps between the teeth, do the orthodontics with the baby teeth in the mouth and sometimes it makes sense to remove the baby teeth and possibly restore the baby teeth at the end of the orthodontics with mm -hmm. implants, bridges if implants are inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we close space if, if someone's missing the permanent teeth but most of the time with a 22 year old if they still have baby teeth in the mouth, they're the probably yeah, they're probably missing teeth underneath there. With canines, sometimes yeah, sorry, canines sometimes they're impacted or stuck. So one of the nice things that we do with young patients is prevent that from happening by taking a look at seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds, and we could identify when those canines look like they're going to get stuck or impacted. Mm -hmm. But if you have a 22-year-old with a baby tooth in the mouth and the canine is stuck. Very frequently, we're able to bring the canine tooth down into the mouth 
and, and do that with orthodontics. And you were asking before about Invisalign versus braces. Mm -hmm. That's still one of those situations where we're probably a better idea to do it with braces and not with Invisalign. Invisalign. Yeah. Okay, here you have another uh, mom, Kamare. My son still has baby teeth with loosing, loo oh, long, long, long roots. Very long roots. Oh, my son had that. I mean, they were mm -hmm. like this. Oh, my God. Right, right. And they keep telling him to wait, but his teeth are turning. He's 13 and a half. Yeah, well, 13 and a half. This, this is a good rule of thumb. If you have an orthodontic problem, it's a good idea to see an orthodontist. We don't charge for consultations. Happy to mm -hmm. take a look at him. Most orthodontics, I know we're talking about my practice, but most orthodontists are like this. You come in, we'll take a look. Uh, happy to see your son and, and give, you our, give you our opinion. Mm -hmm. General dentists are great dentists. They do wonderful things. Um, they don't know as much about growth and development as, as orthodontists do. So I think getting in to see an orthodontist is, is a smart idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could evaluate their individual situation. Sometimes it makes sense to wait. Sometimes it makes sense to do something. Again, you really have to take a look at everyone as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I'd be more than happy to look at your son or, or one of my colleagues would be happy to. Okay, another question Erica had, it, but I was going to ask you the age. We're not talking about the 93-year-old. Sure, sure. We're talking about the 3-year-old. Like, right. How young can you start treatment on a child? When is it recommended? Yeah. The, the American Association of Orthodontists uh, says age 7 um, would be... Excuse me, let me rephrase that. They say it's a good idea to get a screening at age seven. Okay. Um, my personal view on that is if the dentist sees something that's not quite right, mm -hmm. and the dentist says, hmm, I think your son or daughter is gonna need orthodontics, um, you know, let's look at that in a few years. That should kind of trigger something in your head, say, hmm, the dentist says I'm gonna need to see an Start orthodontist. Start saving money. Let me see, <laughs> let me see the orthodontist Start saving now. Money. Start well, let saving me, money. Let me see the orthodontist now, mm -hmm. okay? The dentist, again, is not the specialist. Let me go see the orthodontist now mm -hmm. and see what they say. They're, they're probably gonna say, let's wait a little bit, let's watch a little bit, mm -hmm. and not do anything at the age of seven. But sometimes we catch things at the age of seven that, that, that if not treated at the age of seven, really cause major problems, a major expensive problems later on down the road, mm -hmm. and they're easily solved at, at a younger age. Mm -hmm. so, so typically, if the dentist sees something, or if you see something, something doesn't look quite right, you know, most moms look in their kids' mouths every now and then. Mm -hmm. If you see something that doesn't look right, come on and we'll take a look and we'll tell you what's smart. Most of the time, we don't do treatment until all the permanent teeth are more or less in the mouth. But again, that right. varies uh, uh, the, based on the person. Some people will, will start, it makes sense to start treating them when they have three or four baby teeth still in their mouth. And mm -hmm. sometimes it makes sense to wait until every single baby tooth is out. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of these questions are great questions, uh, but it really depends on the individual. And I'm not just trying to you know, punt. Mm -hmm. uh, it really depends on the individual. Sometimes I really want to start an eight-year-old, and sometimes an 11-year-old, I really want to wait for all those baby teeth to fall out. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. And so funny that Christopher George joined because he was one of the people that um, answered the question where he said that uh, the time, the length of time people have to sure. wear braces is one of the things that would concern him. He said it's almost like your wardrobe. It's like you got it. <laughs> so I know that treatment varies, but can you tell, I guess, what have you seen as far as in your practice, the sure. shortest time someone has had braces mm -hmm. to a practical as far as the longest time that they may Right. So I, I would say our average patients in treatment about a year and a half. Okay. Um, full treatment, adult, child, um, average kind of situations, things a lot like you see every day in the street, you go, oh, that person's wearing braces. I wonder how long they're going to be in treatment. Probably about a year and a half. Okay. Uh, same thing with Invisalign, about a year and a half. Again, with accelerated treatment with Invisalign, we could drop that to under a year. And then... Again, there's a wide range. If someone has something that's relatively straightforward and simple, maybe it's gonna take six months or nine months. Um, if someone has something more complicated, it could take two, two, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. But in our practice, most of our patients are done in, in about a year and a half. Okay. So George, you don't have to have that as your wardrobe just for a year and a half. Um, why do, what's it, peg lateral? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'll we'll come down with uh, it, rather than flat. That's Erica again. Erica er has all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, Erica is the mom uh -huh, with uh -huh. the two kids and the braces. That, okay. You know, 
Yes. Oh, good, good for you. Well, I'm sorry for you, Miss Erica, but we'll take care of the kids if you decide to use us. <laughs> um, the the, the peg, peg laterals are um, lateral incisors of the second teeth over, and uh, lateral incisors are very, vary a lot in their width. Mm -hmm. And some of them are a little narrower than usual. Let me see yours. Smile. Yeah. You, you have nice laterals. Mine are a little small. Oh, see, my okay. second tooth over is a little on the small side. It works, but mm -hmm. it's a little small. Uh, sometimes they're very, very small, and sometimes they even shape like a peg. Mm -hmm. And it's just a natural variation. These things run in families, although not everyone in the family necessarily has one. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on the situation, uh, very frequently it's nice to intentionally leave a little space around the lateral incisor mm -hmm. so that they could be built up by the dentist. Ooh, I like when I have them. Oh, wow. It's very romantic here. Yeah, it is, right? Danny's going to dance in front of the light switch. Well, listen. Sorry. We're in Wellington, well, and they, and they have uh, they have these automatic lights by code here. So We'll take the lights sorry. going out. The Wi-Fi's mm -hmm. still good. So we're good. I mean, it, you know, it happens. So, okay, you were saying something before the lights went out. Yeah, so, so the peg laterals, they typically don't look good unless the dentist makes them larger. So what the orthodontist will do, will straighten everything out, uh, straighten everything up, set up the bites of the bites good, Mm -hmm. um, and, and make enough space so that when the dentist restores the small laterals or the peg laterals, mm -hmm. that they look really nice and beautiful. Okay. Who, like, because I know you, now you did say you, you gave me a compliment on my teeth, and people do. I never had braces. I could use braces. I remember when I was watching uh, Facts of Life, I used to love Tootie. Remember Tootie? Mm -hmm. She had, sure, like, the sure, best, sure, they were yeah, very yeah. huge, but she had beautiful. the best, she mm -hmm. had the best braces to me. Right, right. So, when you see, I guess, you, um, well, I'm going to say, who is a candidate? For braces in other words like because mm -hmm. i know most people don't have perfect teeth but right. who, who are like top candidates um people who have um peg laterals that we talked about impacted mm -hmm. canines mm -hmm. um you know real real dental issues mm -hmm. um baby teeth that haven't fallen out right mm -hmm. uh permanent teeth that are impacted or haven't come in not only canines but other teeth mm -hmm. um severe crowding where it makes crowding. it really hard to brush the teeth and floss the teeth, they can really benefit from 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 braces. Mm. Uh, people with big underbites, you know, with the bottom teeth too far in front of the top, mm. big overbites, you know, ten-year-old mm. boy with a big overbite and his teeth, you know, he hits his teeth in the playground or oh in the sports gosh. playing football mm. and gets a tooth knocked out or a chipped mm -hmm. tooth. It's a permanent injury mm. to have a tooth knocked out or, or break a tooth. Mm -hmm. So, so there are a lot of people who could benefit from orthodontics. And then we talked about aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wants to look better, so. Uh, you know, there, there are lots of people out there who, who want to get braces so they have a prettier smile. They want to close gaps between their teeth. They mm -hmm. want to straighten out teeth. Mm -hmm. And you and I want to just kind of give you kind of kudos. And Daniel, you can yell out too because, you know, sometimes we, we forget. No, we want you to yell out. You have been, like, given, like, award. Oh, my God, I'm looking at this wall. Oh. This wall is like the Grammys of uh, or the. <laughs> with the awards and you give back to the community as well. And I wanted people to know that because it's one thing of you, you know, just intake all these patients and doing this, but you actually give back. I remember you treated, how many, I don't know if you remember, but how many kids to the movies? Um, I forgot. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. What was it, Sing? What was it, the movie? The, it was one of those movies. Yeah, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody. It was a movie went, about the cats, what was that? Yeah. Pets. Pets, it was pets, pets, yeah, pets. pets. So you give, you also give back, and I just wanted to, you know, kind of let people know that because it's so important when you're when you're this type of person and you're actually giving back because yeah. it's, you 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 have a lot of patients obviously your practice does well and you have two locations I know um, Danielle did put those on there yeah. but um I just wanted to let people know that uh you know you've been awarded hey uh, hey Sabrina you've been awarded um awards and you've been on magazines and you know I'm sitting next to a rock star I think. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I think so. <laughs> I think so, but I just wanted to let people know that as well because it's, it's so much more to just the practice. You actually give back to the community. You give, um, can you just kind of elaborate like a sure. little bit on the prizes? So, you so, always give like the prizes to the kids. And, yeah, well, okay. we, well, we have all sorts of contests going on in the office all, always where, mm -hmm. where, where kids, adults have all sorts of things that they can win. Mm -hmm. um, we have gifts and giveaways all the time within the office but, mm -hmm. but in terms of specifically giving back to the community um we're we're, we're involved i mean most of our patients are children even though we, we have a fair number of adults mm -hmm. so uh we sponsor 
all the teams and you know the, the bands and everything else that the kids are involved in the mm -hmm. yearbooks the schools were we're, we're partners with many of the schools um, mm -hmm. so so we, we give back a lot to the to the kids the teams the schools um, organizations people yes. people come in they're they're fundraising so when their family's sick they want money mm -hmm. for for a donation for a particular um, particular um, charity we, we take care of that mm -hmm. and uh, and we, 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 we treat some some cases that uh, some patients for, pro bono or for free mm -hmm. who who, uh, who need orthodontic treatment um, we do that through a, wow. uh, through something called smiles changes lives mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also treat patients uh, from from some of the air, local area dentists who identify some patients who uh, who need some help mm -hmm. so uh, so it's it's not all about business it's about taking care of people mm -hmm. um, and that's and, why I uh, wanted to mention that as well because yeah. you know people I didn't want people to walk away just to think oh you know he's just you know just an orthodontist but you actually do so much more for the community thank and you. I wanted to thank commend you. you on that thank you um, we have some some comments cheek biting I know grinding is a lot too does that have anything to do with the yes yeah, so, so sometimes people buy, uh, uh, bite their cheek because they have a crossbite or the teeth are in the opposite position mm -hmm. so the top teeth are designed to protect the cheeks when you bite and if you're in a crossbite mm -hmm. you can bite your cheeks a lot and sometimes people just bite their cheeks a lot because they bit their cheek and they get some scar tissue there and it's just easy to keep biting their cheeks so mm -hmm. it could be could be either either situation and Keisha Freeman said yes he does um, he loves uh, freepreneurs, and freepreneurs love Dr. Petrova Ortho back. So that's one of the, uh, the sponsors that you do as well. Hey, Nefertiti, you probably, you, you feel like, you do so much, you probably don't even, okay. I don't know, he's like. Lose, lose, <laughs> lose, lose track, but you know, we, we, we. Mm -hmm. We never say no. <laughs> what can I tell you? People, no, that's people, true. people come in and they say, "Hey, I have this course, I have this organization. Could you get mm -hmm. involved?" Mm -hmm. And and we get involved. I mean, you know, we're not. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not uh, someone who who could underwrite a hospital or anything huge like that. But we get we we help our patients and we we we're active in their lives and in in causes and events that that touch them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of looking to make sure that we didn't uh, miss any questions. Because usually when I miss a question, I get I get in trouble later. Uh, treatment costs, okay, that's down. See, Danielle, she's just knocking them out left and right. Um, let's see here. Any, uh, okay, let's talk a little bit because you have some fancy machines and what what what? what let's yeah, see so this is this is a, a digital, fancy machine. Sure. It's a digital scanner, okay. and uh, it enables us to uh, to take three D models of patients' teeth, mm -hmm. and uh, and using a three D model. We could develop treatment plans both with braces and with Invisalign. Mm -hmm. So we could do uh, outcome simulations of, of what you'll look like. Um, we're also able to, to treatment plan complex uh, situations that require a multidisciplinary approach between me and the restorative dentist and an oral surgeon or a periodontist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, we use that for all of our Invisalign cases mm -hmm. so that we never have to take the old impressions uh, like we did 20 years ago. Right. Me. Oh, yes. Uh, and and the machine, the technology is amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it just takes about three or four minutes to scan an entire mouth, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's it's wonderful piece of technology. Like I said, we're using it for other orthodontic appliances because we're really trying to move away from taking impressions. Mm -hmm. How? Because I've seen very rare, but I've seen it where people will just get braces on the bottom or the top. Mm -hmm. Do you? Oh, I'm not a huge fan of doing that. I'll okay. do that in certain situations. Is it like half price? Um, no, no. It, <laughs> is sounds, it half price? It sounds, it, it, you know, a layman would think that it's half price, right? Okay. So I'm like, just going to so get the like, top. I'm just going to sure, get the top. Sure, Look. sure. It's so like, like, like you, go, you, go into, you go into a store and you, and you, you go into a restaurant and yeah. you buy one entree and you split it between yeah. two people. It's half price and buying two entrees. <laughs> um, but but you, what you're paying for is you're paying for our time. Uh, okay. and, and you're not paying for the actual appliances. I mean, this is a piece of plastic. Braces are pieces of metal. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. well manufactured and whatnot, but they're pieces of metal, a few hundred dollars for, for braces. Um, what you're paying for is, is, is you're paying for our expertise. And, and therefore, if we treat the upper versus the upper and the lower, we're, we're really involved in your treatment for the same amount of time. You have the mm -hmm. same office appointments. 
So really don't, don't think of it economically. And I, never, I personally never think of it economically. If, if, if someone wants to treat only one arch, I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it usually makes sense to do both. Because even, let's say someone's top teeth look pretty good to them, mm -hmm. and their bottom teeth are all crooked. And they want to just get lower braces. They don't want to get upper <laughs> braces. So just do lower Invisalign, not do upper Invisalign. Mm -hmm. um, I can't line up the bottom teeth perfectly unless the top teeth are lined up perfectly. And um, a little bit of, an, of a perfectionist, and I like to do everything right by my patients. Mm -hmm. And in order to do the best I could possibly do on, say, the lower, mm -hmm. I really need to be on the upper. So I encourage people to do to do both arches. Mm -hmm. And again, if aesthetics are a concern, think of either clear braces or even better Invisalign. Okay. So what what are the treatment plans for someone who needs braces but want or need implants? Yes, uh, that's a great question. Great question, Jessica. Back on. Um, so uh, dental implants cannot move. They're fused to the bone. So we have, we have patients who, who have dental implants in already and we're doing orthodontics in, uh, on them uh, because they decided they wanted to do orthodontics already after they did implants. And it works and it's fine, but it limits what we could do because that tooth cannot move. The dental implant cannot move. So ideally you want to do orthodontic treatment before dental implants. Wow. That was a, that was a good question. Because now I'm thinking yeah, about it, I'm like question. letting that process, like, yeah. you're right, they don't move. Yeah, no, dental implants cannot move. So, okay. yeah. One more, well, I don't know if they have any sure. questions, but when you have um, people who have braces, and the biggest thing is I think when they take them off, of course, you're like, oh, the wow factor. Right. The bleaching. Mm -hmm. is, it, is that like almost kind of like a rule of thumb, like you gotta bleach your teeth right after. No, you, your teeth look great when the braces come off. If you're oh. if you're good at keeping your teeth clean and mm -hmm. you've been to the dentist like you're supposed to go every six months or whatever the dentist recommends, mm -hmm. um, your teeth should look gorgeous when the braces come off. Um, we we polish your teeth here in the office. Mm -hmm. uh, we do offer whitening if people want to whiten their teeth further. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're taking great care of your teeth, you don't need to get your teeth whitened when the braces come off. Okay, because that's, that's one of the myths that they're yeah. going to look. No, your teeth should look gorgeous. Your teeth should look gorgeous. Now, mm -hmm. occasionally we'll have someone who doesn't take care of their teeth, right? We have a, you know, the, the classic 13-year-old boy who doesn't like to brush his teeth. <laughs> and, and brushing your teeth with braces is hard and takes a lot of work. And I think a lot of parents mm -hmm. don't realize how hard it is. It really is, really is a big responsibility for these kids. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, you, so it's a lot of work to keep them clean. But if they're not keeping them clean... We, of course, discuss it with the patient, discuss mm -hmm. it with the parent, um, discuss it sometimes with the dentist. We actually had a young man today who uh, we, 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 put, took a, we put a pause on his orthodontic treatment, mm -hmm. and he took like three or four months off, got to the dentist, worked on it a lot, got his hygiene under control, mm -hmm. and then we, today we, we restarted his treatment because he, he really was falling down. And the worst thing is taking braces off and having dental problems. Mm -hmm. So so we really try very hard to, to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. And you see people that ever have to get braces twice. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, well, there are, there are Danielle over there is smiling. Um, oh, Danielle, you've had <laughs> braces twice? Mm-hmm. Three times? So, so, so oh there, are, there, are, there are a couple of reasons for this. First of okay. all, if you're doing interceptive or phase one or early treatment while there are still baby teeth in the mouth, mm -hmm. we didn't finish the f definitive treatment. Again, we went into some, some young child's mouth mm -hmm. to go ahead and solve certain problems that if we didn't intervene at that time, they were, their treatment would be more complex, more expensive, and longer. Gotcha. So patients like that almost routinely will get a second phase of, of orthodontic treatment. But mm -hmm. they know about that going in, it's mm -hmm. not a surprise. Okay. Um, I think what you're alluding to are people who wore braces when they were in middle school or right. early in high school mm -hmm. and turned around, they're 25 years old and mm -hmm. they're getting married and uh, they're going, huh, I, know, I want everything to be perfect at my wedding, but my teeth don't look so great, I want to get them fixed up, oh my God, I have to wear braces twice. Mm -hmm. uh, those cases are I don't want to say always, because nothing is ever always, but mm -hmm. those cases are pretty much always because they stop wearing retainers. That's the number so one thing. So wearing retainers for the rest of your life is just something you have to do if you want. I want to keep my gap closed. I wear a retainer every single night when I go to bed. Not a big deal. I brush my teeth. I throw it on. I jump in bed. I get up in the morning. I pop it out. I rinse it off. Soak it a couple of times a week in a denture wow. cleaner, and I'm good to go. It takes mm -hmm. me less time to do that than it does to fix my hair. 
So uh, <laughs> it's 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 not a big imposition. It's mm -hmm. not a lot of work, and it sure beats wearing either braces or Invisalign a second time and paying for it a second time. Mm -hmm. So so we'd like to do it right the first time. We like to wear retainers. We recognize not everything in life is perfect. So so sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. Okay. So we're going to be wrapping up real soon. Um, I thank you for like giving us so much knowledge. My pleasure. My pleasure. And so, you know, kind of sum things up. Come in here, come in the office. If your smile is not perfect, if your children's smile is not perfect, you got to come see them. The consultation is free, so you, what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain. I know a beautiful smile. My husband was on here saying he wants to come, so I'm like, okay. But, you know. We'll take great care of him. We'll take great care of him. Did you have anything else you, you want to say or feel like, you know, you haven't got out or? Um, What's well, that? Danielle, Danielle <laughs> keeps pointing this out. This is, this is a, a, a high-speed vibration appliance that's put in the mouth together with Invisalign. It helps seat the aligners, the Invisalign trays, and it helps speed up your treatment. So uh, someone's, someone's getting married, they want to do something quickly, this works really well. Actually, so it speeds uh, my, up the treatment. Speeds up the treatment. My uh, my son-in-law had a situation going on, and mm -hmm. we started treatment on him nine months before before he married my daughter, and uh, we, we we finished it all up uh, before before the wedding. So it's really kind of wow. cool. And so this speeds things up, and and a lot of times, um, you know, we have we have a lot of brides who are trying to trying to get things going before the wedding, and mm -hmm. let's say we don't get a hundred percent of things done, but we still get. 70%, 80% of things done. Mm -hmm. They're prettier, they feel better. We take a little pause in treatment with either Invisalign or with braces and then mm -hmm. finish things up after the wedding. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the, these are all, so all a great options. great gadget, vibration. Keep your mind out the gutter, Erica. This is about teeth. Anyway. It's a, it's a, it's a class two <laughs> medical device, FDA approved. Yes, <laughs> but it's, it's so funny. I think braces are I mean, way cheaper than veneers. And um, you know, if you can save your teeth and, and get them straight, why not? Oh yeah, veneers are terrible. Actually, let me, let me tell you two, two, two parting thoughts. One, okay. when the dentist tells you go ahead and get veneers to straighten your teeth to do something, uh, they're cutting down your teeth. Those teeth are cut down for the rest of your life. Mm. Uh, I think it's- They're nubs much smarter to go ahead and move the teeth where they belong. Mm -hmm. um, and think of the, the cost of doing it maybe twice in your life or three times in your life based on your age, because mm -hmm. none of that dental work lasts forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, think, I think there is a place in dentistry for cosmetic dentistry mm -hmm. and for doing veneers, but if the, case, if the patient could be treated successfully with orthodontics, by all means do that. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest myths also um, is that all healthcare is the same? I think most of us are educated enough to know that that there are better people to go to and better mm -hmm. doctors and mm -hmm. specialists to go to. Mm -hmm. So you know you're not going to go to you know you're not going to go to your internist if you're having a heart attack. You're going to go to a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the heart specialist. Um, it's the same thing with 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 uh, with, with the orthodontics. There are a lot of general dentists who are doing orthodontics. They have no formal training. It's mm -hmm. like I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. Mm -hmm. Do you really want them touching your kids or touching yourself? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a wide range of quality in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And do your due diligence. Make sure if you're doing orthodontics to come to an orthodontist, me, someone else, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, I, I'd strongly recommend that you see an orthodontist and not a general dentist who dabbles in a little bit of orthodontics here and there. Is that a freaky case? Um, Stacy says, so I purchased braces for my team and after $5,000 and two retainers, my son's teeth move right back. Yeah, I'm sure his son's teeth move right back because he's not wearing his retainers. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. Mm -hmm. Two retainers, maybe he lost one and needed a replacement, but mm -hmm. if he's not wearing his retainers, his teeth will move. My bottom teeth were crooked, my top teeth have space. Mm -hmm. If I don't wear my retainers, the space will come back. If I don't wear the retainers, my bottom teeth will get crooked. Very, very simple. We're, we're moving teeth into a different position. We have to hold them. You wear glasses, you have to wear glasses the rest of your life. Mm, mm, okay. Right? Do you see any other people, like let's say they go to an orthodontist, got, get, get a set of braces, and just hate the office or whatever? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And do you, will you see Yeah, any? we, we okay. unfortunately, like I said, there's a wide range of, of quality. Okay. I think most orthodontists are, are pretty competent and pretty good, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we do see patients who start in other offices okay. and, and regret it and come back and, and we treat them. Okay. Whether, whether they did that with another orthodontist or with a general dentist. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we see that 
frequently enough. And mm -hmm. it's unfortunate because they end up paying twice mm -hmm. and their treatment ends up, ends up taking a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. Again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or promote myself, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very important that you go to someone good the first time and get it done right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure because I know some people on here who have braces and they, you know, they say, oh, well, I'm not really happy where I'm going or so I want to make sure that you, you Oh, absolutely. Come yeah, we, we, I feel like I was given a license by the state of Florida to take care of people. Mm -hmm. So I don't say, no, I won't start, I won't treat you because you started treatment somewhere else. I feel an obligation to, mm -hmm. to try to help as many people as come to me and want, want help. Okay, and you have to wear your retainer. Have to wear your retainers, yeah, sorry. My, my you, 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 have, you have to clean your room, you have to do your homework, you have to wear your retainers, that's just life. And as we get older, there are, you have to pay your taxes, right? Yeah, there, there are a lot of things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. You shower every day, hopefully you change your clothes every day, you shower every day, you brush your teeth every day, you wear your retainers <laughs> every day. These, these, are just, these are just things that you do to maintain yourself. You mm -hmm. eat every day, hopefully you're eating healthy, uh, hopefully you're exercising every day. These are just things you do to maintain your body. Mm -hmm. And if you do them, it works great. And if you don't, then you could be like Danielle off camera here and do it a second time. Well, Stacy, he answered that earlier, but I know you didn't, you, you didn't join, so I'm going to tell you. And I didn't know this either. The uh, retainer is a, a forever, lifetime. Forever. Uh. Lifetime. Our bodies change over time. I wasn't always this young and handsome. Uh, no, it's easy. Um, our bodies change over time, and, and every part of our body changes over time. Our eyes change over time, the mm -hmm. positions of our teeth change over time, our skin changes over time, our hairline changes over time. Everything in our bodies change over time, and, mm -hmm. and retainers will hold your teeth where they are, where, where they were moved to mm -hmm. forever, hopefully. And your retainers stay the same for a uh, Yes. You get what I'm Yes. A lifetime? Really? Yeah. Now, the retainer may not last forever. You right. may need a replacement retainer. I think mm -hmm. there was someone on who bought, you know, a second retainer for, for, their, for their child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a piece of plastic. It's not going to last and forever. And they move pretty quickly. Like, if you, like, say if you don't wear them for, like, six months and you come back. Yeah, and six months, you... you're not going to get it on. So, so someone, wow. who, someone who missed the night with a retainer, they'll put it on the next night and all of a sudden they'll feel a little tighter because their teeth are trying to move. They skip a week and they put it on and then it really hurts. And then mm -hmm. you skip a month and it's like, I can't get this thing on. And then they don't wear it and then their teeth move even more. So mm -hmm. the and name of the game... then they come back to you. Then they come back. So the name of the game is Be Good. <laughs> so that's the thing. Be smart and be the, good. Yeah, the permanent yeah. one. But that, that's a lot of... Yeah, that's, that's a lot of... Uh, you got to do a lot of cleaning mm -hmm. to do the permanent one. But I think that's yeah. what maybe why people do it because they don't have to think about it. They anymore. think they don't have to worry about it. But the, the, the maintenance on it is harder. Remember I talked about... Mm -hmm just putting it on and taking it off and I'm done. Mm -hmm. If you have the fixed retainer, you have to floss underneath there at, at night. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go out at night, you, you go out with your friends, you go to mm -hmm. a club, wherever, you go, you come home, it's one, two o'clock in the morning, you gotta floss underneath this, this thing. Mm -hmm. You go off to college, your kids go out, they don't, they don't do it every night. So, mm -hmm. so I, I'm a big fan of a removal retainer mm -hmm. because it's just super easy to pop in there. But and for the, the young work. men, mm -hmm. young men can still kiss with braces, right? That's I'm a not, big thing. Uh, of course you could. Well, okay, I'm, no. not gonna, I'm not going to touch that. No. Yeah, but of course. <laughs> no, because, you know, a lot of women get them, but uh -huh. a lot of men, I've, I, I forgot that. That mm -hmm. was another thing, intimacy with the braces. They're like, right. I can't kiss with braces. I'm like. No, people people kiss with braces. You know, okay. there's, there's the joke <laughs> that the teenagers lock, lock, you know, get stuck on, on braces. That actually doesn't happen. But uh, <laughs> but but people live people live normal lives with braces and of mm -hmm. course you have Invisalign if you're worried about any metal in your mouth. And but, they're temporary but, uh, folks. They're temporary. They're temporary. So the new the new straight smile is is the new trend. Um, the white straight teeth is a new trend. We used to have goals in our mouth when we were younger thought that was cute and now everyone's taking them out everybody wants yeah. the white straight teeth. So please come see him. What are your hours? Now he's not usually here this late it was just special for me. Actually, what, what actually I'm usually here this late really? doing yeah, oh, doing, I work on the Invisalign more. late at night. Oh. No, Invisalign really? treatment cases, yeah. Oh, so I'm usually okay. usually here kind of late, but but our hours are, are 8 to 6. Mm -hmm. uh, we're typically in the office Monday through Thursday, occasionally on a Friday, although we try not to. Mm -hmm. We like our long weekends. Right. And uh, but 8 to 6 so we're here early, we're here late. Mm -hmm. And uh, love to see love to see you guys in the office. Um <laughs> <laughs> My son kisses, he better get stuck. No kissing a lot. <laughs> Erica is, yeah, Erica. <laughs> okay, so. Like I said, I didn't want to touch that one. <laughs> I think I'm blushing. <laughs> so you have two, because I know we, people ask you, have two locations. You have one in Wellington. Yes, we're in Wellington and we're in Boynton Beach. So okay. we're in Wellington on, on 441. 
kind of near the mall, right mm -hmm. near, right south of Forest Hill, and we're in Boynton on uh, Boynton Beach and Military. Mm -hmm. So, and if your child goes to school, let me tell you, I have two sons who go to school, and they 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 work around your schedule, so that's no excuse. Um, like I said, other than you know any other excuse you can come up with, but that's not one. So we're gonna do just a quick little tour around the office, sure. Um, so you can kind of show people, cause you know, like, what, what what kind of establishment does? I want to see something. So we're gonna do that. So hopefully, if we didn't answer your questions, um, Danielle is so awesome. She's like the social media guru uh, for Doctor Patrol, but she'll go down and answer any questions. Well, and, she's uh, running around. I don't know exactly what she's doing is she in the office. Up? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so I'm going we'll to show. I'm going to show the the wall of uh, the wall of fame that oh. you have. Yeah. Embarrass me. Embarrass no, me. I'm not going to embarrass you. It's all good. Okay. So let it's me all get, good. Look at this. Look at all the wall. Of actually, fame. this this is the one that I'm most proud of, and I'm actually most embarrassed about. It. I can't believe I'm talking about it. Okay. What but, is that? Uh, this was given out to uh, to one person in every uh, orthodontic residency class. And uh, and I and I won it, and I was embarrassed to win it because I'm a little bit of a of a humble guy, and mm -hmm. uh, and the instructors voted me the best in my class, and wow, and I was yeah, that was uh, you know up at NYU, and that was uh, I was definitely embarrassed by it, but it was it was uh, it was kind of cool, and um, but uh, yeah, so I went to New York University mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. and, uh, and 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 I practiced in New York and in Connecticut and, wow. and been in Florida now for for twenty one years. So and, so you uh, know your it looks like you know your stuff a little bit. Yeah, done a, been around the block a few times. Yeah, okay. Um. So this is our consultation room. Uh. So new patients come in here. We have uh, room. private okay. consultations over here. Okay. And um, we're kind of doing this a little all backwards, but when you come in the office. Um, this is our reception area, and we have a couple of TVs, we have Wi-Fi. Uh, yes, they we do. Have, uh, nice little lounge. Get some beverages and some Get some snacks. water. And, uh... The sign-in room, yeah, like yeah. The kids come and sign in themselves. Right. Okay. And our, and our front desk area. Front desk. And, uh, back here, um... She's running. Yeah, Danielle's running. She does, she's and camera you know shy. You know what? Let's, right here in Dr. Pro, real uh -huh. quick. Because sure. I, I kind of see this kind of spot in my eyes. So you have products that you sell here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the, let's these, talk about this real quick. These, these are sold pretty much at a cost. Where these aren't things that we use to, to, to make money, but mm -hmm. they're to help our patients. So we have these. Uh, if anyone wants a mouth guard, we always give them a free mouth guard. These cost us a little bit of money, so mm -hmm. so uh, so we charge a little for them. Uh, but th these are Under Armour mouth guards that fit over braces, which okay. is really smart and that's for um, the people that grind that's right? uh, the people who grind to use them and just people who do sport who oh, do sports. sports okay yes yeah, so the sports uh my son broke a tooth when he was in middle school playing mm -hmm. flag football in school and i didn't even know he was playing flag football in school it was organized with a coach mm -hmm. and uh, he broke a tooth and i could have bought him a, a mouth guard for a couple of dollars and saved the tooth wow. um this is a con this is called plaque hd it's a toothpaste uh, kind of like the disclosing tablets of, of yesteryear, you chew mm -hmm. on them and it turns color. So this turns color and kind of helps the kids see where they're missing brushing. Oh, that's neat. you know some adults need that. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. What? Hopefully not. Well, no, they do. <laughs> this, this, this is kind of a cool product that you spray in your Invisalign aligners, helps keep them fresh and clean, mm. and uh, whitens your teeth at the same time. Uh, this is tooth whitener. Uh, relatively inexpensive but good electric toothbrush yes people yes. who aren't doing a good job keeping that clean mm -hmm. and again a fluoride mouth rinse to help prevent cavities mm -hmm. and marks on the teeth so uh so these are all available here and all these things are cheaper than you can find them anywhere else uh again we we, we have them here uh to help our patients <laughs> well erica said yes they do what i said uh, the adults and you you do the you always recommend the water picks too um I that recommend awesome. I recommend an electric toothbrush really? okay. and and manual flossing. Uh, oh, okay. um, uh, yeah, the the automatic flossers mm -hmm. really don't do get the job done. Water picks are great; they're not mm -hmm. necessary. Okay. If you have one, great. great. If you want to buy one, terrific. Okay. But a good electric toothbrush and 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 dental floss is really the way to go. Okay. So I'm gonna follow you now. I just wanted yes, to stop you at the products. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And. Um, Lots of rooms, lots people. Of rooms, lots, lots of rooms, rooms. Lots of rooms. So uh, these are our treatment operatories. In most orthodontist offices, mm -hmm. um, the treatment operatories are 
they don't have private uh, operatories. So these are semi-private operatories. Yep. Most orthodontist offices are a big open bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you have a lot more privacy mm -hmm. um, for, for, the, uh, for your appointments. And we have an area here to brush teeth. Yes, brush teeth my son's floss. favorite area. I tell so, him all the time. He, so this is where your kids or yeah. you can where come you, and yeah. brush your teeth before your appointment. Absolutely. So after, after snagging a cookie up front, the kids will come back here and brush your teeth. <laughs> Usually the parents are pretty good about the cookies after the appointments, not before. This is the waiting so area, good. too. Yeah, so this is, this is another on-deck area. So we mm -hmm. have a, a reception area there, TV. kind of an on-deck area here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the parents like to come back with their kids mm -hmm. and they have some space over here. And uh, the rooms are pretty much uh, pretty much all the same. Okay. Uh, pardon our box, our beverage refrigerator up front broke, so we just got a new one today. Yeah. Of course, I'm saving a box in case the new one doesn't work for a day or two. I just want to make sure it works. Um, here we have our digital x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, nice and clean. Nice yes. and clean, yes. <laughs> yes. Very low radiation. Okay. You, you spend the day on the beach, you get more radiation. You get in a plane and fly halfway across the country, you get more radiation. Super, oh super safe. Okay. And, um, and that's, that's pretty much Danielle, uh, don't, don't try to hide. Look, Danielle, Danielle's been hiding the whole time. Danielle, we see you. Uh -huh. We see your silhouette. Just say <laughs> hello to everybody. Danielle is one of the... Uh, what, 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 is her, what is your official, besides the social media guru? Dan, Dan, she's the orthodontic assistant and the okay. marketing director for Patrol for Orthodontics. Okay. Marketing director and now you said... Because you, you kind of put your face down. Clinical... That's because she's being shy. I'm a clinical assistant. Danielle is And wonderful. you have been here for how long, Danielle? 13 years. I think most of your staff has been with you forever, right? This has most... been 20, 22 this, this, this July. This July, July will be 22 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means that you, you're doing something well. Uh, you can keep staff. We, 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 we try to have a great environment in here. We spend a lot of time here. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I mean, I spend as much time here as I spend more, more time here than I spend at home awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, <laughs> right? You know, you do. You spend a lot of time right. at work. That's true. So, uh, so we, we try to have a great environment. We try mm -hmm. to have a lot of fun with each other, with the, with the team, with the staff, mm -hmm. as well as with the patients. Mm -hmm. And because uh, we, we spend a lot of time here. We want it to be a very pleasant environment. Because you see, you know, people say, when I say people get awards, oh. they don't, they, you know, they need to, oh, someone said I love her locks. Oh, <laughs> look at this! Look at this rock star. No one, no one ever tells me that I love my locks. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rock star. So I want to just, like I said, thank you all. Thank Come you so Danielle. much. Okay, we got to do a farewell. To, to, oh, to, you got, you got her, you got her for a minute. Feel? Yes. Yeah. So you know, you know, Danielle is incredibly outgoing mm -hmm. and is not someone you would think is camera shy. So I'm not quite sure where this is coming from. <laughs> Because she's usually out there, the life of the party and all, but uh, but uh, she's, I guess, being a little camera shy today. Yeah. So any so any final words? Any any final words? I'm, there, I'm sure you'll you'll get some people that are gonna come see you soon. But any any final words? Any that you keep wanna smiling. Say? Keep smiling. Take care of your teeth. You that's, don't get any extras. Th that's true. <laughs> all right. Well, we're gonna be gone, and uh, please share this video. Lots of information was was you know was given out and uh. Yeah, so this is Dr. Patrol. Say bye. Bye. Take care. Thank bye. you. Have a good evening.